This is the May meeting of the State Hypnotist Mastermind. Thanks for joining us. We are psyched to have Chris Jones joining us this month. And Chris is Chris is just sweet. That's all I'm going to say. Chris is sweet. How you been, man? Man, I'm great. I'm so happy. Yeah, it's been a family weekend in Boston. I had a gig and I just took the family with me. And so, nice. yeah, it's beautiful. That's cool. That's cool. Hey, we've talked, we've talked a little bit, but not, not a whole lot. And I, I don't think I ever did ask you, like, what were you doing before you got into stage hypnotism? I worked at a university. I finished my master's. It's in recreation therapy. I am not a therapist, but I graduated. I worked a regular university job. I was charged of one of the housings, like the residence halls. And I did that for six months and I was enjoying it. But someone said, this is your last summer off. I hope you enjoyed your last summer of your life. They said, you're going to work, you know, 11 months a year now. And I said, I like a switch clicked. And I said, I can't do that. And I started looking for agents and Bass Schuler, they found me. And I said, uh, I'd like to work. And they got me a few shows like nine, sight unseen. And I told my, my university, I'm like, I got to quit because I, I can't focus on both. And that was 2011. Okay. Yeah. It's been what a good run. First, what first drew you to hypnotism? How did that happen? You know, I was a bad magician. <laughs> <laughs> I love the honesty. I love it. I was a bad My magician. double lift was kind of shaky. And I said, how about <laughs> if you can't master the double lift and turnover, how about you learn hypnosis? <laughs> And, and I'm too honest to be a mentalist. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't like lying that much. So no one knows the word you're thinking of. You didn't ask anyone to write it down, did you? You're like, how did he know? <laughs> how did he know? So, yeah. That's cool. You, how long, I, 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 you know, forgive me, I don't do... I don't do homework for these because I just want them to feel like they're fun conversations. So how long between, so that, that 2011 to the AGT appearance? All right. So 2011, I had my first couple paid shows with the agents, Bashuler and 2015, I think we did America's Got Talent. And by that, I mean, I know I filmed it. And then it aired on my birthday. It was like May 27th or May 26th, 2015 or 16. And it's just an important date. We can talk about anything. I'll share everything, an open book. But like my mom was going through chemo. She passed away, sadly. But I remember watching myself on national TV, sipping champagne with Mel B, the Spice Girl, and Howie Mandel is next to me. And I'm like, this is awesome. And another sip, and I go, my mom has lost all of her hair to chemotherapy. Yeah. And it's kind of how the world works sometimes. You get your highs, same time you get your low. And so I think it took five years to get that. But it was because a lot of people kept filming my shows at colleges. Yeah. People were putting on YouTube, and that's how I got AGT. So let's dial in on that span, that initial span, like, did you have a, did you, what was it like, you're just working, grinding and, and some lucky things happen in terms of getting attention or did you have a plan for getting you from that starting point? No, no, no. Uh, Fred Winters was one of the guys who taught me a lot of what I know. Salish is my other mentor, but Fred Winters, he was doing 150 colleges a year. And I said, that's what I want. I want to do 150 days on the road. I want to see all these places. I want to entertain college people. And because Bass Schuler can really polish their performers with road work and get you gigs and gigs and they start at a nice honest price point you know yeah so they say hey this person's new give them a try if they're not good we'll give you a discount next time but let them do some work because i remember my second show ever it was rough but the beauty of being on stage it was real like i looked at the advice i was like is that good are we are we good on time she's like yeah that's fine you just all right I'm by, bye bye. <laughs> and I went back like six years later. I was like, guys, I am so good now. Like, I am so much better. It's like if you go back to the first person you had sex with, you're like, I've gotten so much better. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you're not crying anymore. I'm not. You're it's not so crying hard. anymore. <laughs> oh. Oh I'm not God. praying before and after. Yeah, no, yeah. that's good. <laughs> God, I hope this goes well. <laughs> so, so you're 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 basically doing what I think a lot. Of, you're just you're glad to be working. You're you're taking everything you can. You're putting in the work. You're working on the polish, and then yeah. um, <clears throat> you know this this wonderful opportunity does come up for you. What about the exact like? you know, the, the viral nature of what you did, how much planning, how much foresight did you have to, to, to really get that to happen? I mean, None. I know you can't make things go viral, but I mean, no. you accomplishing what you wanted to accomplish on stage in that regard. They said, we want a hypnotist. They hadn't had a hypnotist. And I said, you know, who are your judges? And I just knew that Harry Mandel was notoriously afraid of germs. Right. And I said, I can work with that. Cause that's the only thing I can prove. Like, I'll make Heidi Klum think I'm cute because she likes black guys. Uh, <laughs> I'll make Howard Stern not be able to talk, you know, because he's known for talking. Uh, you know, Spice Girl roller coaster fear. But the Howie Mandel thing made a lot of sense because I couldn't fake that. But I read the comments online and it's like, oh, he is wearing an invisible glove. And I'm like, well, that's stupid because no one else is. <laughs> and it's like, oh, Howie Mandel is in on it. And I'm like, that's that's also stupid because he's been rich before I was born. Uh, yeah. But yeah. you're allowed to believe whatever you want. Doesn't mean it's right, necessarily. Right, right. People... I am so happy to see your faces. Let me just pause real fast. Yeah, I yeah. know 89% of these hypnotists on this, and this makes me so damn happy. It's cool, right? Yeah. This is beautiful. It's a good bunch. It's a good bunch. Yeah, it's super cool. Brenda, pay attention where you're driving. Never mind waving at us. <laughs> Rebel. I think so, a lot of people are muted. It's always fun hearing your laugh. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, we'll you open are such it up. a good we'll open it up in like five more minutes and people can yeah, start firing okay. off their own questions to you, Chris, and you can you can have some interplay with them. It'll be fun. Um tell me about so. So that happens and it's awesome. And, and, and like, I think a lot of us in this business would love to have some kind of moment like that, where we get national spotlight and, and we think all these amazing things happen, but like, give us a little more perspective on what that's really like. Is that a thing oh. of like, be careful what you ask for, or was it just all awesome? No, it was, nothing's all awesome. This, the, the Midas touch, everything the King touches turns to gold until he touches his daughter. That's rough. That's real. I, I turned 29 when America's Got Talent dropped. I checked my email and everything was like, cure me of this, cure me of that. My phone is blowing up because I didn't, and I was just trying to work. Yeah. I had my cell phone online and people were texting me and it was like, happy birthday, Chris. Next text. Hey, cure me. Make my wife love me again. I have cancer. I have this. Uh, I went to war, stop my kid from stuttering. It'll mean the world to me. I got booked to do like a strip club, Sin City in New, New York. And uh, I was like, yeah, I'll take it. I just need money. I just want to perform. And then I was like, I shouldn't be at a strip club performing. No one's going to be like, and now hypnotist Chris Jones, let's put away the women. <laughs> let's all be quiet for five to 10 minutes while he does his induction. <laughs> Ma'am, put on your shirt. You're distracting him. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but no, I, and then the next year, uh, I was going through some things of not, um, I didn't grieve my mom's loss because she passed away like six months later. And so 29 America's Got Talent, 30, I'm on an airplane and uh, I'm talking rap lyrics. Now, if you're on an airplane talking to rap lyrics, people are going to question some things. <laughs> and there is an off-duty police officer. He pulls me aside. He's like talking to me, keep me calm. Very, very cool. And uh, I end up in handcuffs. And I spent my 30th birthday in the psych ward because I didn't grieve my mom's loss properly. So I'm in the psych ward. And, yeah, literally just freaking, oh, I'm a hypnotist. I hypnotize people. I don't belong here. And they're like, he's crazy. <laughs> 
<laughs> my dad's like he's actually a hypnotist but he does belong here like he's not my <laughs> about hypnosis but keep him here because he's yeah. he, he's a threat to himself so yeah uh, it all works out that's so when i turn 36 may 27th that'll be my five year six year anniversary of being out the psych ward so yeah. happy birthday me good for you good for you i appreciate Thanks. your open sharing so much that's awesome that's I, it that, you, anyone can break a bone like you fall off the jungle gym as a kid you break your bone it's just what it is when you break your head that's the exact same thing as having a mental breakdown you have all this stress you're playing too hard and boom there's a trauma that happens between your ears and if you just act like it didn't happen people will notice they'll be like hey looks like your arm's broken <laughs> flopping around a little bit there you, you, yeah. you might want to get that checked out by a professional like oh no i found a priest it's fine no 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, you need a doctor yeah yeah so we've had more you know all that cool stuff and challenging stuff has happened you have all this perspective yeah. i mean you're you're you know you're not the kid getting started anymore you're a veteran hypnotist how has all of that contributed to what you're doing now or what you you still want to do as a stage hypnotist like that's a great question you know i i i don't want to 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 embarrass or patronize zach but i think zach has taken this in a new way. Like, all right, I don't care about the social media. I don't care about the YouTube so much. And Zach's doing something really phenomenal on TikTok and he's advancing the, the, the awareness of hypnosis. And I see a lot of faces that I remember here. I see Grant and I see Colin and everyone has, I think like a two prong approach. Like they like the stage, but they also have you know, I got this and I'm sharing this information. I think that's pretty cool because I have a daughter and, and she's my everything. You give me time with her and that's really all that matters to me. So I'm trying to work one day a week yep. on the road. Anything more is kind of too much. So the old 150 shows a year, like I would not pay money to have that. Yeah, so just no desire to be a grinder anymore. Like, just not a priority for good reason, right? I, I've got footage of my daughter walking into my arms. Yeah. I have the footage of her being born. And you're like, well, you can make $2,500 if you go to Storm Lake, Iowa. <laughs> Everyone's laughing who's been to Storm Lake, Iowa. <laughs> Beautiful human beings there. Horrible place. Uh, <laughs> It's a cesspool of Iowa, according to Wikipedia. Well, if it's on Wikipedia, yeah. it must be true. So yeah, um, <laughs> cool. Well, I'll look. So good. You stay with us because we're gonna we're gonna open it up. Like, what do y'all want to ask Chris or talk to Chris about? You know, you do. Stop being bashful. Someone's itching to go. What I really want to know is. There goes Colin. See. All right. So Chris. <laughs> Uh, have you ever seen the Harlem Globetrotters before? Uh, yes. How many times? Probably twice. Okay. And the first show and the second show were same or different? Oh, uh, that's a really great question. I, I think they're the it's same. It's a trick question because I already know the answer. <laughs> okay. The show that I saw when I was six years old. Yeah. And the show that I couldn't bring myself to take my son to when he was six years old. Yeah. The exact same freaking show. No difference at all. Maybe some of the players had changed, but it was the exact same show. So my question, once you've seen the Harlem Globetrotters once, you, there's no need to go back and see them again. Okay. So I'm my question for you on stage hypnotist is, should we be like the Harlem Globetrotters or should we be like Burt Kreischer where every single tour is different, but he always comes back to the machine? That's such a great example to weave in, Colin. That's great. It's a really good question. Uh, we have, a, uh, what, is, what do we have? Um, uh, Schomburg, 
uh, the, the knights fighting back and forth. Uh, medieval times. Medieval, okay? yeah. So you know it's fake. You, uh, th there was real athleticism, but it's predetermined who's going to win. Hmm. My buddy's wife is a stunt double, and she does all this stuff. And when she's performing, she's fighting, fighting, fighting. And then at the end, she lifts off her thing, and she's a woman, and people lose their shit. Like, oh, snap, she killed all those men. Oh, and all little girls, their hearts are pounding. So if it was always a man winning, that would be fine. If it's always a green knight, what have you. But uh, it's so damn cool that Spider-Man can be a woman. And Spider-Man can be a person of color now. So short answer, each one has their own approach. Jay Leno never filmed a special because he liked live audiences. Conan O'Brien filmed a special. He did his live show. He did whatever. I don't like the idea that you can have a CD player and just do your routine. I don't like that. I will literally say, hey, audience, I'm walking to this laptop real fast because I have something that I have to do. And I start dancing over there. And they're like, ooh, he's excited. Like, you see me like shadow boxing in the air because I'm so pumped. But another tangent second or third show ever probably the third or fourth little girl comes up to me maybe fourth fifth grade she says hi you're the hypnotist i said yes i am literally i'm full of confidence hubris to the extreme and she's like you're gonna go hot cold good smell bad smell movie theater funny movie theater and forget the number four dance party spring break that's your show and i like yeah yeah i am she's like i know i've seen one of them and she walked away she's like i'm sure you'll be good and she she wasn't dissing me but i was like holy shit you've seen one hypnotist and i said i'm never doing any of those routines ever again period not a comma so you know that i hope that was an answer yeah yeah no no clearly you do not want to be the harlem globetrotters no yeah okay the little girl said i i've seen one hypnotist and she told me my whole routine and i was like i'm not no no so another story i used to think because i'm from chicago and i thought everyone loved barack obama i was like great white people said the same thing get a real education, be articulate, get a haircut, get a name we can pronounce. Everyone's going to love Barack Obama. He was all those things and people still hated him. Like, oh, ouch. Okay. But I would do a routine where I was Barack Obama and I'd hypnotize people to be like uh, part of our press team. And I did that like all over these red counties and they would roast me back and forth. But it was real. It was fun. And I'd get myself in a hole and I'd dig myself out the hole, hopefully. But I, I'd rather struggle on stage than be like, all right, colder, colder. You're so cold. You're freezing. Negative 20. Negative 30. Thanks. That's a good question. I'll shut up now. No, it's cool. It's cool. What's all, uh, you know, you've been doing it for a while. What's, what's the thing that really keeps you in it? Like, what is it about it that you, that you love really? Like, obviously it's fun and we know we can make money and, but like, yeah. you ever put your finger on like what the thing really is that keeps you in it? Before the show starts and I'm looking at the audience cause I can't help but look at the audience and I see like a young person in the audience. I started bouncing a little bit. I'm like, oh man, I think that kid's like 11 years old. Oh. Sorry. That's all right. And I'm, I'm bouncing back and forth and I'm like, this is going to be great. This is going to be great. So the answer is young people in the audience. That's cool. Terry, did you have a question? Um, I'd like to ask Chris, how long did the little girl bleed after he punched her in the face for asking that question? <laughs> I hit that kid so hard. <laughs> oh, how dare you? I was on America's Got Talent. Have fun. <laughs> Just curious. <laughs> Natasha, I think you are a sports hypnotist, among other things. Am I correct or wrong? 
I'm not actually a hypnotist. I only know you. I'm Grant's friend. Like, I saw your first interview that you did with him when you kind of oh, left oh. your daughter on the sofa and we all freaked out. <laughs> okay, very, very cool. I think there is an attachment to the does sports hypnosis, but uh, it's good to see your face. Yeah. Anybody else have any other questions for Chris? Talked to Grant before. Grant, I've had a good hangout. It's good so, to see you again, man. I guess the serious question. Is, Go ahead, Terry. Do you then do you make a conscious effort to rewrite everything on your show? That's a good question. Uh, or you just say, well, I've got these basics. I'm gonna. And then I'm going to add this. They try to mix it all up and do it. And they were disappointed because they didn't do it. And it, so it's kind of like a double-edged sword, I guess. I don't know. Oh, yeah. No, I get it. Uh, Fred Winters, again, one of my mentors, told me, when you're trying something new, put in the middle of your act. Don't open with something new, ideally. Don't close with something new, because that's what they'll remember at the beginning of the end. Put in the middle. And if, if it doesn't hit, go to the routine that you know is going to hit. I would generally do that. Um, another fun thing I do is <laughs> I, I have note cards and I say, hey guys, we're gonna start in five minutes, write down whatever you wanna see on these note cards. I will do my best to do them. You'll get some horrible suggestions, horrible. Like make someone dance like a chicken. You're like, all right, that's obvious. But guys, like my friend is an ambulance driver. Do a skit with that. And I do like the challenge. I, I think, oh, this person, he, he's actually a cowboy. And then they'll give you a name. Have this person come on stage and, and do this. Like, you get the crowd going and they know it's as real to you as it is to them. So, no, I wouldn't change every routine because that's like driving a manual car. You're going to have to learn how to get used to that. But, no, I, I middle it up. Middle yeah. it up. I like that. Middle it up. Cool. Nice. 